are some elements, some strategies to help you just beef up that confidence. And they're going to seem pretty basic, but I see these apply across the board. Now, this one, don't throw things, but dress the part. Here's what I mean by that. Dress the part simply means be aware that you are judged on appearance. I don't mean that you have to dress up. You don't have to come in looking like this. I mean, this is uniform too, into an engineering, onto a technical team. You've got to dress for what's appropriate to you, but beware that you are, you are being judged by your appearance. So the idea is dress for what's appropriate for your role. And if you don't know what that is, and we were all talking about this, ask your most fashion-forward friend who understands your industry or is here at Intel, or go to Nordstrom's and ask a stylist to dress you. Explain what you do and what your coworkers look like. Just notch it up a half step. Second, sit in the front. Now, I mean this both literally and figuratively. Sit in the front. Get to know your presenters. Get to know people around you. Shake hands. Say hello. Act like you deserve some attention, and you will get it. That's important. Don't hide. And introverts, I know, I love to do this. Introverts, raise your hand, all you introverts in the room. Show yourselves. <laughs> Yay, introvert. Sometimes you've got to work, read the book Quiet, which is just brilliant. Yes, extroverts, and, and this will surprise you, I am a situational extrovert, not an extrovert by nature. I am a trained extrovert. I'm just as happy to go home and sit in my little writing cave office and stay there the rest of the day after I'm finished here. You've got to really work that muscle because the world is set up. Sadly, the world is set up for extroverts. I can tell you a lot more about that. Um, and I'm posting some things that I'll tell you about on my website that uh, Larry alluded to. There's some after gifts for you. Mix the we with the me. You know, we are encouraged to credit the team, credit the team, credit the team, which I think is really a great thing to do. As a boss, I thought, I've got to, I share the credit, I take the blame. That was my job. But there are times you want to claim those accomplishments. Don't discredit yourself as you credit the team. You've got to give yourself the credit, particularly in those situations like job interviews, like transitions. Make sure you give yourself credit where credit is due. Most people, and think if you fit in this category, are humble to a fault. That's not a good thing. That's a fault, humble to a fault. You want to make sure you give yourself appropriate credit. Pick what I call a hero image. Hero is an art, a graphic term about the, your key image. A hero image to me is when you have a mantra, a saying, a slogan, a visual of something that picks you up and gives you exactly the sort of energy or spirit that you need. Uh, I have a client who was a young blonde, tended to up talk, so everything was a question instead of a statement. You know those people that do that? They drive you crazy, right? Okay, first thing I had to do with her is slow it down, add some gravitas, add some heft, so she wasn't seen as a lightweight. And she said, I said, you need an image that's going to ground you. And she said, oh, like a big bellied Buddha? I said, exactly. <laughs> Think Buddha when you go into your senior staff meeting. And she did, and it was incredibly helpful. Another woman, a little bit of a shrinking violet. It's also an image, but more on the negative side. You generally don't want that image. Decided she was a pouncing tiger. Not that she was a flesh eater or evil, but that she was ferocious, she was aggressive, she was powerful. So think of an image that serves you, going up in the elevator, pulling into the parking spot. That image can spark what you need. And when Ann Cuddy, have any of you seen her TED Talk on power poses? She's a Harvard sociologist. Look it up, Ann Cuddy. And, is it Amy Cuddy? Amy Cuddy, thank you. I knew that didn't sound right. She talked, I felt incredibly gratified and vindicated when she said she did a lot of research on power poses. People that are powerful. If you stand like that for two minutes, go try that in the stall in the ladies' restaurant. <laughs> it lowers your the stress hormones like cortisol and increases things like testosterone that you will literally feel more courageous. My favorite having been compared to her in the past, the Wonder Woman stance. <laughs> so think about what you are doing and find, yes, they may feel like tricks and gimmicks. That's okay. If it works, it works. So try some of these things to rev up your own sense of power. 
Finally, craft and have at your disposal, just like you would an elevator pitch, and I know you'll hear more about your personal brand in the session if you're all attending that one. A j I call this your jaw dropper. Everybody's got something that makes other people go, oh, you did that? Whether it is to swim the Shark Fest channel, I had a client who swam the, from Alcatraz, San Francisco, twice. It's a woman in her 50s in a business suit, and I said, you did that? Another woman started a nonprofit as a teenager, re whatever, redonating prom dresses, refurbishing, selling, buying as a nonprofit for girls. Prom dresses. She was 17 years old, high school senior. Amazing. You've all got something like that. Build it into your repertoire, your conversation about yourself. Make yourself meaningful and memorable to others. You've got one, I guarantee it. If you don't know what it is, Ask your friends and family, because they know.